Welcome to another episode of Craig Loves Cooking. Today we are going to be making my favorite meatloaf. Meatloaf is one of my favorite comfort foods. I like it with mac and cheese on the side, mashed potatoes on the side. It's good with just about everything. And once it's cooled down, you can make sandwiches out of it. It's just so many options. I remember the first time I made this meatloaf, the comments were, wow, this is the best meatloaf you've ever made. And we love this recipe, those kinds of things. And that's the recipe I'm sharing with you today. So let's go ahead and let's get cooking. Now before we start combining all of our ingredients, we're gonna go ahead and I like to use the cast iron loaf pan. If you're just using a regular glass one or a regular metal one, you don't need to do this. But when we preheat the oven, this should be in there. Otherwise, uh, everything sticks. One of the keys to cast iron is making sure that it's always preheated. And then when food goes into it, it creates like a sear inside and that keeps it from sticking to the pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven on and put this into preheat. One of the best features of this recipe is that it uses zucchini. There are times of the year that zucchini is everywhere and you can get it real easy and cheap, so this is a great thing to put in it. Also, it's a great way to sneak in an extra serving of vegetables for people who think they're just eating the meat. So, and it's good for them. So, we start with, I'm gonna go ahead and shred one cup of zucchini. Just gonna rinse that off a little bit. I always cut off the tip there. And we need one cup of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shredding that. And I'm gonna keep shredding until I have one cup. Now, as you could see, that was about one medium zucchini. And when I put it in here, makes just about one cup it might be a little bit more and the thing is I went ahead and shredded it right in this bowl so I already have some of it in there and that's absolutely fine so there's my one cup of zucchini now that I'm done with the zucchini I'm gonna add all my other ingredients we need one pound of ground chicken breast one pound of turkey breast. And it calls for ground turkey, but I always get the leanest I can find, which is the turkey breast. So we have our turkey breast, our chicken, our one cup shredded zucchini. And now I'm adding two tablespoons of minced onions. one egg, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, and here's where our flavor starts to come in. It calls for one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one cup of breadcrumbs, and I like to use this brand. It's seasoned with Romano cheese, adds a little extra crunch to it. The next thing is one ounce or one packet of ranch salad dressing and seasoning mix. I like to use this brand. It's from Aldi's. It does not contain any MSG, so I think it's got to be a little bit better for you. And it's very inexpensive. I believe it's less than a dollar. So you just take that and add the whole packet. Once you get everything in your bowl, go ahead and start combining all those ingredients together. You want to make sure everything gets mixed really well. Some people like to use their hands, and I will warn against that. The reason for that is because the heat from your hand is gonna start making the fat and the meat melt down. And that will tend to give you a flatter meatloaf and a little too dense. If you mix it using a utensil like this, you're not gonna get the heat from your hands, and the meat's gonna stay a little bit better for whenever you put it in to cook in the oven. It does take a few minutes and it's a bit of work, but you wanna make sure that everything is really combined well.
Now, before we're ready to put that into the actual baking pan, we need to make the topping, which is my favorite part. We're gonna take one cup of packed brown sugar, and we're gonna take one fourth cup of ketchup. And we'll combine those to make the sauce that goes on top. I like a lot of sauce to go on top, but if you wanna use a little bit less than this, that's absolutely fine. This makes a lot of it. It's going to be a nice thick sauce and that's a good thing because it tends to cook down the sides whenever you're making it. So we're going to put about three-fourths of it on before it bakes and then when it's all finished we're going to put some more on top to finish it off. But it should be nice and thick like this. Once we get that mixed, we're gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna use about a half or three-fourths of it on top while it's baking, and then the rest will go on when we're finished. Remember that if you're using a cast iron loaf pan like I am, it's gonna be really hot coming out of the oven, so just be very careful and have a nice heat-resistant surface you can put it on. You'll need to spray it with a cooking spray, just lightly. Remember, if it's hot like this, it's going to smoke up a little bit, and that's absolutely fine. Then, take your meatloaf, and here's where you are gonna have to handle it. Go ahead and pick it up. Get it into a loaf size. As I'm rolling this, I can smell the ranch seasoning and the onions and everything, it smells so good. But just get that in the shape of that. Be careful not to touch the pan, and just set it down in. As you can hear, it's sizzling. Remember, when you're using cast iron, the sound of that searing is creating a non-stick barrier so it's not going to stick whenever it comes out. It's okay to have it sort of peaked up a little bit. I try not to make too much of a peak because I don't want all of my red sauce to run off. Once you're finished with that, make sure you wash your hands because you've just handled raw meat and you don't want to touch things that are going to eventually be touching it after it's cooked. So now take the red sauce and go ahead and we're going to put that right on top of the meatloaf. Like I said, it's nice and thick, which is what we want. And do you see how the meat is all the way in the corner over there? We want to make sure that that's happening. Remember, if this comes in contact with that raw meat, you're going to have to get a different spoon. You don't want to contaminate the sauce. During this process, I actually have two spoons. One that I scoop on and put on the meatloaf and the other one that I use to spread it around. In fact, it's so thick that sometimes I'll just use my fingers. Here you can see we got the sauce evenly distributed across the top. It's okay if it doesn't go all the way to the edges because it, as it heats, it's going to run down to the edge. So just make sure you haven't put too much on because it'll overflow and go down into your oven and burn. But this is just about right. Now, remembering that this is very hot, we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the oven to cook for one hour. We're gonna take the temperature before we pull it out though, make sure that it's reached 165 degrees. So let's go ahead and get that in and cook it. Once it comes out of the oven, make sure that the temperature is up to 165. Go ahead and test that with a meat thermometer like this. I went ahead and already tested that. And then go ahead and take the sauce that's left and you can just put that on top. I added just a little bit of ketchup to it. It was very thick and you can see how the thickness of it is real advantage while it's cooking in the oven because then it doesn't just run off. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do is make sure that you just put a piece of foil or something under the pan while it's in there. Uh, sometimes this can drip over and if you get especially something that's this sugary if it spills over and starts to burn it'll smoke really bad. It makes a horrible smell. So you might just want to stick that under just in case there's anything that drips off the side. Okay, you all know this is my favorite part. So before I try it, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe, make sure you get all the recipes because we'll be coming out with more and more of them. Let's give this a shot. Mmm, this is just right. Perfect texture. This will be great for meatloaf sandwiches. I'd love it with a side of cheesy grits or mashed potatoes. So, remember, Craig loves cooking because Craig loves eating. So, we'll see you next time. Bye.